NXT. I'm pretty sure that's what's, what I'm going to call it. I will review a book today. It is A Court of Thorns and Roses. It's actually a whole series. Um, so I'm going to kind of review that. And I'm going to be doing a review and a little info about green tea, which I've almost drunk all of. Drink, drunk, it doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna be doing a kind of background into what I'm going to be doing in my art business right now. Um, that's my first album. So anyways, let's get started. I'm gonna start with the book, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. It is a, it's a series about a, a woman who is trying to care for her family and they're very poor and then she something happens, I don't want to give too much away, is thrust into the Fey world, which is something that uh, Sarah J. Moss likes to write about a lot. She likes to write about fairies and magic and uh, different worlds from the one we live in. And it's one of my favorite things to read. I love young adult fantasy. That's mostly what I will be reviewing. And uh, throw in a little bit of spirituality, self-help books, something I also like to read. There is some great information out there about how to become a better person, and I'd like to share that with you. So, uh, back to the book. So this, the way that Sarah J. Moss writes is just so phonetically beautiful. It is poetic almost um, in, in her descriptions. She just puts you right into the picture. You don't have to come up with your own picture because she has written it perfectly for you. Um, I just love her writing style. There is something about a beautifully written sentence that jazzes me up. I aspire to be like that. I look up to people who are like that. It's just, mm, love it. So, her descriptions are wonderful. Just, if you like to read beautiful writing, as I do, she's already your girl. The second thing she's really great at is female empowerment and the hero's journey storyline. So I don't know if you know anything about writing or story plot lines, but they say that there are only seven uh, stories that could ever be told. But a hero's journey is the most popular. It's what we see with Lord of the Rings. It's what we see with Harry Potter, it's what we see with just about every every story where somebody is down in the dirt and they have to overcome something and then become this hero. It's That's basically what it is. That's how she writes. She always does female lead characters. She has another book series out, which I will review at some other point. She is very great at writing romance. So there's something about the way that she writes romance. It is tantalizing. it is seductive, it is sexy. She does have throw a little adult romance in there, which um, I tend to be a little uncomfortable with in reading books. But the way she writes it, it pulls you in. I mean, she, she just pulls you through the book so effortlessly. You just wanna sit there and read, 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 read until you're done. And I'm one of those people that loves books like that. I cannot get enough. In fact, I want to read so much that I just like completely ignore everything else in my life. <laughs> um, she's, a, she's that kind of writer. In my opinion, you may not believe so. You may not like how she writes at all, but this is my opinion. Uh, it's kind of what book reviews are. They're opinions from people who read a lot. <laughs> I have only read the first two books of the series. But I can already tell that the next two are going to be just as wonderful as the first series that I read of hers. She is amazing at beginning, middle, and end. You never have any dead books in her series. A dead book is, is a book that's filler. It, it's something that you write in between the next story idea in the next book. She has none of those. Great writer. Love her. Um, if you like female empowerment, if you like a little bit of romance that's written very well, uh, if you like great words, written beautifully, she is your girl. She is, I want to be her. <laughs> um, moving on. So I give like 
two thumbs up to A Court of Thorns and Roses, five stars. I don't know what my rating's gonna be. Maybe I'll make up something different. I don't know. But definitely read this book. It's, it's great. If you have been looking at it and not picked it up, do it. Green tea. That's the next thing. Like I said, I've drank almost all of mine this morning because this is take two of my video. The first one didn't go so well. <laughs> Let me tell you about green tea. So I have heard a lot of people say that they think it's bitter. Um, they don't like it. It's too much or astringent. That's another word I hear. Um, let me be the first to tell you that green tea, if it is properly handled, is light and refreshing and beautiful. It is super heavy on antioxidants, so I'm gonna give you a word of advice or caution here. If you are taking heavy medications, I would not drink green tea. It, it is a powerful antioxidant. It is going to want to flush your system of those medications and will make you very sick, so don't drink it if you are medicated. Uh, I think the vast majority of people in the US are. I'm gonna be honest about that. The other thing is, do not drink it on an empty stomach and do not take your vitamins with it. It is a powerful antioxidant, so it wants to flush any of that, um, any of what it doesn't believe, you know, your body, is, it's not natural to your body. So if you are on an empty stomach, it will kind of, come back up at you. It makes you very queasy. Just, you know, eat a piece of fruit or a piece of toast with your green tea in the morning or, you know, any time of the day. Uh, do not take vitamins with it because it will want to expel them immediately. So now that we have gotten that disclaimer over, let's move on to how you actually handle green tea so that it tastes good and not astringent. It is the one tea where I would say it's important to pay attention to temperature and steep time. There are a million different things that you could learn about tea. There are classes for it, same as wine. It is that diverse and, and complicated. Tea drinkers usually have a lighter palate and they enjoy um, the, the different flace, flavors. Flace, what the heck is that? Flavors, aromas, different things like that. So if you are a wine drinker and you enjoy that sort of thing, you will probably also really enjoy tea. You can drink tea as somebody who doesn't really care about that sort of thing too. I wanna bring tea to everybody. It's a beautiful substance. There is power in it. There is meditation in it. It, it, it has gotten me through a lot of really hard moments. You know, I'll sit down with my drink, my green, my tea blah, blah, in the morning and meditate and, and have quiet. It heals the soul. Tea heals the soul. When you are doing green tea, preparing it in the morning, you want to make sure that your water is just before boiling. I'm not gonna make you sit there with a thermometer. That's ridiculous for most people. Some people care about that sort of thing and if you do, good for you. If you're the average person, you probably don't care. So before your teapot boils or whistles or whatever, you wanna pull it off that just before boiling temperature is perfect for green tea. You want to steep it for no more than five minutes. Anywhere from three to five minutes is the perfect time to steep green tea. If you like a lighter flavor, you're gonna to wanna to go on the three minute side. If you like it a little bit bolder, five, but never more than five, otherwise you will get that bitter taste. It, and then you wanna take your tea bag right out Caution you not to squeeze the tea bag in green tea. You can do that for anything else to get that extra water and flavor out of it. I wouldn't do that for green tea. It, it gets a little bit um, bitter at that point. So then you add whatever you want. I drink uh, lemon and honey in mine and it's a wonderful way to wake up. It helps get rid of the toxins from the night before. I do not take medication, so that is okay. <laughs> it does wonderful things in your body. It cleans you out. It it's, they call it the um, anti-aging tea because it is so great at keeping your body optimal. Um, and we're gonna end it on there before I ramble anymore. So, very last thing, my art world. These are the things I'm working on. You're gonna be seeing a big flurry of activity from me. I am super driven and excited about what I'm doing right now. So right now I have got 
a fabulous jungle leaf and flower foliage painting. It's gonna be super bright, vibrant colors. This is a commission for a wonderful woman that I used to work with, super kind and beautiful, and I just, I love her. Talking to you, Joy. Hopefully you watch this. The next thing I'm going to be doing is finishing up my tarot series. I know this has been a long time coming, but I've gotten so excited about other projects that I kind of put it on the back burner. But I do want to finish it. So this is Aries and Libra, the last two people and paintings to be done. I have the entire Zodiac series on my wall. I still would really love to sell those to people. Um, I want people to buy art, not because I want the paycheck. It's a good bonus, but more so, I love that feeling that I get and the other person gets when they are looking at a piece of art that speaks to them on a deep emotional level even. That's what really jazzes me up. That's what keeps me going. That's what makes this a beautiful um, life goal for me. I'm also going to be doing finishing up tarot series uh, or keep going on the tarot series. This is the hanged man. I chose the chameleon because he works beautifully in symbolism for the hanged man in the card. I'm going to finish him up. He's going to be rainbow bright. And the last thing is I am, oh, two things actually. I am no longer wanting to do pet portraits. They, um, they don't speak to me really anymore. It's not something that I want to do. And so I'm super sorry for those of people, those people out there who have really enjoyed the pet portraits and want more. I just, it, it's not something that resonates with me and I have to be true to myself. So if you see me do a pet portrait, again, it is probably only going to be for a family member or a friend who I really, really love and I've probably done it for free. <laughs> the other thing is I'm super interested in moving forward with doing more portraits. I did one of my best friend, Megan, love her. She's beautiful and inspiring and uh, I wanna keep going with that, but I wanna do it specifically for spiritual leaders in the spiritual community. I love beautiful, spiritual, empowered, strong women. I love to paint them. It is something that really jazzes me up and I want to do that. I'm actually gonna be doing one uh, here soon for a woman whom I absolutely adore, uh, Jessica uh, J. Jessica at the J way I think is her Instagram. I'll have to look that up and I'll recommend her in my comments. She is a shaman. She does Reiki healing. She does yoga. She does something called the human design where it basically plots out um, your body on a chart and shows you exactly who you are and why you do the things you do based on when you were born and where you were born. And it's, it's kind of like a more super in-depth um, map to your person. She does these. She, uh, look her up for that. They're wonderful. I've had my done, mine done. It helped in my life tremendously. Tremendously. It also helped my relationship amazingly. Totally recommend it. I, like I said, I'll put her information in the, in the comments. I really am interested in doing a whole lot more of people like that. Shamans, yogis, spiritual leaders. I like have a secret um, hope and dream and wish that one day I get to do Sahara Rose's portrait. Um, she's the one I recommended yesterday. I mean, I filmed the video yesterday. Not sure when this video is going to go out, but uh, just that's that's what I want to do. So, um, thank you so much for listening. I hope that you've enjoyed this, and then I hope you come back.